So last week, we were talking about centripetal force. Okay, we were talking about bank curves and unbanked curves. Okay, there's all kinds of situations that involve centripetal force. Okay, we don't even really think about. Uh, for example, how many people have ever got a rock in their windshield? Okay, it may be scary sometimes with the big rock, right? Um, but it's more the annoying little ones, okay, that come out of somebody else's tire. Now, why do they come out? Why does that rock not stay wedged in the tire? Um, well, gravity plays a little bit of a part. Um, when are you most likely to have one thrown at you? When the car in front of you is traveling at a constant speed, accelerating, or decelerating? Accelerating. Okay? And here's why. It's friction that holds the rock in the groove of the tire. Okay? They usually get stuck in the treads. Okay? Friction holds it in the treads of the, of the tire until there's enough inertia that friction can't hold it there anymore. That's when it's ejected from the tire. Okay? Now, the area where it's going to be ejected from the tire is always going to be right here. Right? Because that's also where when the tire hits the ground, the tread tends to like flatten a little bit or change shape slightly because of the weight of the car on it. That's why gravity plays a little part there. Okay? Um, but as the car is accelerating, okay, the tire turns faster and faster. The faster you go, the more inertia you have. But the tire can only provide so much friction to hold the stone in the groove. So when it gets going fast enough, it lets go. Right? And when it lets go, the rock then stops traveling in a circle and travels in a... Yeah, well, I mean, in the real world, it actually does this. Okay? It travels in a projectile arc because it becomes a projectile. But to simplify, it flies out like that. Okay? And that's what smashes into your windshield. I mean, the real world is, is it does do this, and it comes down and hits your windshield. Okay? And that's what leaves a big crack in it. Okay? But it's a matter of a centripetal force that was present was suddenly gone. Okay? And now that rock flies off okay? according to Newton's first law. Okay? All right. Uh, so if we're looking at this question here, this isn't actually about the centripetal force. This is just about circular motion in general. Okay? Pebble stuck in the treads of a tire 36 centimeters from the axle. It takes 0.4 seconds for the wheel to make one revolution. What's the speed of the pebble? All right, so they're wanting us to calculate V. They're giving us R. What else did they give us? Did they give me in this question? Time. Time. Okay. What time specifically? What do we call the time for one revolution? Period. Exactly. They gave me a period. All right. So I know big T, period, and it's um, 0.4 seconds. All right. Can I find V if I have R and T? This is the formula we learned about the first day of this unit. V equals 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle, or the distance traveled, divided by the period, or the time it takes to go around the circle. All right, so when we plug all this in, we got 2 times pi times 0.36 divided by 0.4. So it's moving at 5.7 meters per second. Okay. Now that's out of a bike tire. One coming out of a car tire is going to be moving quite a bit faster than that. So how do you avoid getting that rock in your windshield?
and talked it out. <laughs> okay, well, that, if you could see it coming, which you don't usually, okay, you could see it coming, you could try to make a massive emergency maneuver and not crash into anybody. It is, which is why there's regulations on them having mud flaps. That actually blocks a lot of the stones that they would throw. Okay? Um, but the best way to avoid that is to not follow such rules. Or follow exceptionally rules. Don't follow exceptionally rules. Okay? That would only be a way to avoid getting a rock in the windshield, but it would usually mean you get a back bumper in the windshield. Okay? Um, so don't follow exceptionally close. If you followed exceptionally close, the rocks would go right underneath your car because you'd be this far off the bumper and they wouldn't get a chance to elevate. Okay? But traveling further back, having a good following distance would mean that they would fall harmlessly on the road in front of you rather than hitting your windshield. All right. Um, try number two. I'll give you a couple of minutes on that. Okay, so this question reviews a little bit of the stuff we did the first day, which is the difference between period and frequency. Okay, remember that they are the inverse of each other. Okay, period is the time for one revolution. Okay, that would be seconds. Okay, per rotation or revolution or cycle. Okay, whereas frequency is revolutions per second. Okay, which is why. T equals 1 over F, and F equals 1 over T. Okay. Now, in this question here, we're talking about the fastest spinning collapsed star, or pulsar, okay, uh, has a radius of only 16.1 kilometers. Now, imagine that. This is something that's on the order of hundreds or thousands of times heavier than the sun, squished into something that's only 16.1 kilometers in radius. Okay? That means it would fit inside the city of Calgary easily, but weighs hundreds to thousands of times more than the sun. Crazy to think about. It spins really, really fast. Okay? Um, so at the surface, we're looking for how fast is it actually spinning. All right, so we're looking for V. Okay? What were we given? We were given radius, but it needs to be in... What do we usually have radi radius in meters? Okay, so that'll be 16,100. Okay, and what did they give us here? 716 hertz. Is that period or frequency? You guys are so quiet today. Okay, hertz is cycles per second. Is that period or frequency? Frequency, right? Okay, so we got frequency being 716 hertz. All right, V equals 2 times pi times R over T. I don't have T, I have F. So this is also true. 2 times pi times R times F. Since F is 1 over T, I can just do that. Okay. So when I plug in my numbers here, I'm going to have 2 pi times 16,100 times 716. All right, 7.243, what do we got, times 10 to the 7, 7.2 7 times 10 to the 7, okay, meters per second. Is that pretty fast? Okay, to give you some idea as a matter of comparison. That's the speed of light. This is what we would call a relativistic speed. That means that you would begin to feel the effects of the theoretical time di distortion that would occur as a result of approaching the speed of light time would slow down for you, okay? Your perception of time would be less or slower. Actually, your perception of it wouldn't change, but um, it would be different than, let's say, mine would be okay, if I was here on Earth instead, okay? So the faster you go, 
here's the weird thing, this is relativity. The faster you go, the slower time appears to travel. It actually happens with the International Space Station. They stay up there long enough and don't change the clocks. They get behind. Because they're going really fast. It's not a lot. seconds younger. All right. Um, let's move on to the next one here. Yeah, I'm not that one. All right. I want you guys to see if you can do this one. Determine the magnitude of the centripetal force. Okay. So you're looking for FC. Okay. On this dragster's wheel has a mass of 45 kilograms. Okay. Has a radius of 0 0.480 meters, okay, and is rotating at 30 meters per second. So, do we have to do anything like really complex here? No, we just have to fill in the formula, right? Okay, so we got that FC equals MV squared over R. Simple as that. Okay, we have a 45 kilogram tire. Okay, and it's uh, moving at 30 meters per second, which has to be squared in the formula, and we're dividing that by the radius of 0 0.480 okay, meters. Right, and that was radius, yeah. This is something you do have to watch for, incidentally. Make sure that they're giving you radius, because if they give you diameter, which sometimes they do, you have to change it to radius. Okay, it's something you have to watch for. It catches people often, okay, uh, because we just assume we're going to be given radius because that's what we need. Okay. All right, uh, so we got 45 kilogram tire. Okay. All right, so we're looking at 84,375 newtons worth of force to keep this tire on the rim. Right, that's a lot. Okay, now. How is a tire kept on the rim of a car? It's the air pressure. Okay. The air pressure inside keeps the bead on the rim. Now there's usually a little bit of adhesive that's put in there by the people who put your tires on as well. Okay. But when it comes right down to it, what keeps the tire on the rim is the pressure inside the tire pushing the tire against the inside of the rim. Okay, so that's a lot of force, you think about that. Okay, the problem with tires like these is that on a dragster, the tires are not always fully inflated. In order to assist with traction and dissipation of heat, they are actually often underinflated. Okay, and uh, when they first start, you can actually see the tire kind of fold a little bit as it's trying to slide past. Okay, so they have to use specially constructed wheels and tires for drags. drag races like that, though, the tires will just fly off all the time. Okay. Um, let's skip those. I want you to try this one. So this is an unbanked curve. Okay. What keeps you in an unbanked curve? Friction. Friction. All right. So what that means then, just as a reminder, is that the centripetal force is being provided by the force of friction. Okay, remember that it's a level surface. Okay, so we know that when you're going around an unbanked corner, friction is providing the centripetal force. In other words, it's friction that's allowing you to turn and go in a circle. Okay, so we know the mass of this car, 1,500 kilograms. Okay, we know the radius of the corner is 40.0 meters, and the coefficient of friction is 0.6. Okay, so. Fc is being provided by friction. And instead of writing normal force, I'm just going to write m times g because normal force and gravity are equal in this situation because it's a level surface. Okay? So I'm trying to find the speed at which we can take it. So what do I have to do with r? Multiply it over to this side. Okay? And then m is going to cancel. And then I'm going to have to square root. Okay, we did this one before. It's the square root of mu root. Okay, so we've got v equals the square root of 0.6 mu times 9.81 g times um, our 40 meters r. All right, so square root of 0.6 times 9.81 times 40. All right. 
So the fastest we can take this corner is 15 point, uh, actually we only have two significant figures here, so 15 meters per second. All right. Is that a pretty common type of question you could expect? Yes. Bank curves and unbanked curves are two very common questions you could expect to get on stuff in this unit. All right, we'll leave it at that for today, guys. If I can get you to mask up and wipe down your desks.